Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Kido Muji from KD Concept Researchers. Please kindly uh, like and subscribe to our channel so that you can always get our videos while it drops. And of our, uh, otherwise known as analysis of variance, is a statistical tool which is actually used to check for variation in mean of three or more independent variables. So I put it this way here, that analysis of variance is a collection of statistical models and the associated estimation, estimation procedures used to analyze the differences among mean of three or more independent variables. Uh, now, it is always good to always give credit to the person that developed it. So it was developed by the statistician called Arnold Fisher. That is why the analysis of variance uses what we call the, the Fisher table, otherwise known as the F distribution table. So basically, what is it uh, about ANOVA? Now, let's say we have a given data sets, uh, let's say treatments. You are to apply the same type of detergents in washing a, a particular material. Now we are interested in checking how well each of these three or more detergents have performed with respect to uh, whitening of this particular material. Then at the end of the day, measurements you are taking. Now ANOVA will come in to check if the, the whiteness of the material is a result of uh, a, a particular detergent. That is, if there is significant difference in these detergents, which has resulted to the cleaning ability. So that is what ANOVA tend to check for. Let's say you have a two or a three or more water samples collected from a particular region, and then the physical chemical properties of these water samples collected. Now, ANOVA can come in to check if there are significant differences in the physical chemical parameters of each of these bubbles and also check if there is significant difference between them and a standard value. So that is basically what ANOVA does. Now I'm going to share our Excel screen so that we can continue from where we stopped yesterday. Now, uh, yesterday we were at this table here, the table of water analysis. I'm sure everyone remembers this table from yesterday where we are able to uh, check uh, for correlation between the physical chemical parameters on this first column. So today on ANOVA, we want to check if there is any significant difference between the physical chemical properties of each of these boreholes caption the uh, OGB1 to OGB8. And we are not just comparing them, we are comparing them with respect to this standard value, the World Health Organization standard value for each of these uh, values. And they also call it standard permissible uh, values. That means these are the values that this water uh, parameter should not exceed. So if you look at temperature, you find out that all parameters are uh, below 40 degrees. That means the temperature is good. But there are also some parameters here which may go higher than required value. Example, salinity. The standard is zero, but we have each of these water samples have a salinity greater than zero. So we want to check if there is significant difference between the performance of the bubble and the standard value. So how do we do that? We need to apply the statistical tool here in Microsoft Excel called ANOVA. Now, ANOVA has two ways. We have the single factor where you're considering just, uh, let's say, column alignments. And then we also have the double factor where you're looking at both the rows and the column, checking for difference in both the boreholes and the parameter. So the first we're going to check is our single factor ANOVA. Remember again that all of those statistical tools to perform them, you need to go to data on the menu bar. So first now to perform ANOVA, you click on data, then you go to data analysis. 
بقت اللوت Now the data analysis dialog box is out. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for ANOVA. I'll scroll up. I have the first one here, ANOVA single factor, because I just want to compare uh, based on codon. That is, is there a significant difference between the performance of these uh, water samples, captured OGB1 to OGB8, as compared to the standard value from the WH code. So ANOVA single factor, I'll click on OK. Now, a dialog box will be asked, asking us to impute, look at this dialog box, that we should impute our data range. Now, I'm going to go ahead to select from OGB1 to up to WH group, and I'm going to select the entire data range. Make sure the entire data range is selected, okay? Then, as usual, we need to ask it to label in first row. Now, there is something here that is very important. It's called the alpha level. This is the significant level. Every statistical test must have level of significance. Uh, most commonly used are 0 0.01 and 0 0.05. So for this test, we are testing it at 0 0.05. So I'm leaving the alpha the way it is. Now, everything is all set. I'll click on OK. i like to load. Now, we now have the results of the ANOVA analysis. Firstly, Excel, we go ahead to compute all sums, average, and variance. Now, uh, it is very important to note that, although we call it analysis of variance, but ANOVA actually does not analyze using the variance, but rather it analyzes using the mean, checking if there is significant difference in mean of each of these uh, samples here. Now, let's look at the performance here. Now, that year we have the result of the ANOVA. Of course, uh, those familiar with uh, statistical tests, we know that this table here is very familiar. Let me expand it. So the first, we have source of variation, we have between group, within group, and then total. Uh, now, this is, uh, the between group is what we call treatment sums of square. Then within group is what we call the error sums of square. Now, the performance of this ANOVA is judged by the p-value. Remember, we talked about p-value. That's when p-value is less than 0 0.05, that test is said to be significant. Whereas when it is greater than 0 0.05, the test is said to be insignificant or not significant. So judging from this p-value here, we can now conclude that this test is not significant. And if the test is not significant, what is the implication? It simply implies that there is no significant difference between the uh, physical chemical properties amongst these water samples, and also as compared to WHO standard, that there is no uh, significant difference among them. That is why we have this here. Now, another way to judge this is by looking at the F uh, values. Now, this is the F calculated value, while here we have the F critical value. Now, uh, the rule also states that if the calculated value is greater than the critical value, then the test is not is significant. Otherwise, it is not significant. So what we have here now is the opposite. As the calculated value of F is less than the critical value. So this test, either way, is not significant. So the conclusion now is just simple that there is no difference between the performance of each of these water samples with respect to physicochemical parameter. Now, that's the first data we have here. Now, we have a second one, which is a typical case study. Please pay good attention to this one because this may likely not lead us to T-test. Now, there may not be any need to check for T-test with respect to this water analysis since the test is not significant. Where the test is significant, we can now go ahead to check for T-test, which does pairwise comparison of these water samples or any sample being considered to check where the variation now lies. So let's look at this example here. It says a study to test whether there is a significant, significance in the mean daily casual intake in, in adults with normal bone density, adults with osteopenia, those in medical field understand better, which is a lower bone density, which may lead to 
osteoporosis and adults with osteoporosis. Adults 60 years of age with normal bone density, osteopenia and osteoporosis are selected at random from hospital record and invited to participate in the study. Each participant's daily casual intake is measured based on reported food intake and supplements. The data is shown below. Now, basically, uh, leaving all that statement, what we we'll have here is we we'll have three uh, data, data uh, three variables here. First one is normal bone density. Then we we'll have uh, the osteopenia and then the osteoporosis. Now, I know we want to check if there's significant difference in the mean uh, uh, casual intake between these three category of persons. Now, the, questions are, the question arises, is there a statistically significant difference in mean calcium intake in patients with normal bone density as compared to patients with osteopenia and osteoporosis? We run the ANOVA, uh, the ANOVA using five approaches. Now, the first approach is to make sure that the data is correct and accurate to ensure that there is no missing, missing value here. Okay. The next step now, of course, as we have already done, is to go to a menu bar, click on data. Then from data, we'll go to data analysis. Now, under this analysis tool, we also select ANOVA for single factor and OK. Now, it will ask us to select our data range. I will now come over to this list now, highlight this entire data here. Everything is also group them by column. We have column one, column two, and column three and then labor in the first column. Remember, we're also conducting this test at 0 0.05 level of significance, so I'm not editing that. And down here, I want my results to be on the new sheets. Then I will, okay. Now, look at the outcome of this test. This test is also not significant. As you can see here, the p-value is 0 0.2, which is not a significant p-value. Uh, the p-value is said to be significant when it is less than 0 0.05. So the conclusion is also very simple that there is no statistically significant difference between the casual intake among these three group of persons. Now, let's say we want to do a pairwise comparison of data. Let's say uh, we have a set of data then we want to check in performances. Again, remember that the first thing we did is ANOVA. We can also do a quick ANOVA for this uh, parameter, for one, for two, and control. By going back to data, analysis, then press A on the keyboard for ANOVA. Now let's try the two factor and see how it works. Now I will input the entire range, including the physical chemical parameters. Sorry about this. We are going to go to ANOVA two factor without replacements. Then we now select our input range, including these physical chemical parameters, because we are looking at two factor now, label and OK. Now look at this ANOVA. This is a bigger result. Firstly, it is going to compare uh, between each of the physical chemical parameters to check if there's a significant difference in the performance of these parameters. And also down here, it is also going to compare between the water samples. So that that this is what makes it to be comparing the physical chemical parameters as well as comparing the water samples. Now look at the results. Now the row, remember that the rows represent the physical chemical parameters, while the column represents the water samples. So the p-value for the row is significant. This is uh, 6.32 exponential uh, 16, which is a very small value. So this is very highly significant. You can also check that by looking at the F value. Remember we said when the F calculated is greater than F critical, the test is significant. So there is significant difference between the performance of these physical chemical parameters. They are not all the same. Also for the column uh, analysis, which is the water uh, samples, is a bottle one, bottle two, and control. We also observe that the p-value is 0 0.01. So this is less than 0 0.05. We also 
uh, see another significant result here. So indeed, there is significant difference between the three samples. Now, where this... Thank you for watching this video. You can also check out some other videos that are prepared to this one on our course series in data analysis using Microsoft Excel. Please kindly leave your questions in the comment section and we'll attend to them. Also remember to like, share, comment, and most especially, please kindly subscribe to this channel so that we can always serve you better. Thank you.